Okay, so to start the network connection with a Hyper SR to a real time network, uh, first thing you definitely want to do is you have to make sure that the actual data collector connects to a Wi Fi signal, meaning we have to turn on a hotspot signal or have a hotspot with you. That's what I just did, which means now I can turn on the Wi Fi on the actual data collector on the Tesla. And if I've connected to it before, it should automatically connect directly to it. It did. That's my phone. So I can go back into, and now uh, internet connection has been established. I can go into magnet. I don't know what job I'm in here, so I'll just make a new job. Call it job three. That's okay. It's the, I'm going to be using the Hyper SR network. And depending on what kind of uh, receiver you're using, and I have many of them in here, uh, this is what the Hyper SR typical configuration consists of network RTK Topcon uh, it's a Bluetooth connection and we're using Ntrip for our uh, network protocol height is 6.56 which is exactly 2 meters uh, the modem that refers to um, the, the, the cell phone or the internet connection it's not done through the receiver but it's actually done through the controller because we have uh, the Tesla or the data collector connected to the phone directly so that's correct Next, the existing network connection is the network type that we're using because, again, we're piggybacking on top of the connection that was created in Windows. So that's fine. We're using a specified IP address and a username and password that you've been given. Uh, none of the other settings over here kind of makes the, any difference anymore for network connections, so I'm just going to skip through them really quickly. These are all defaults, so I'm not messing with them. It's not going to make or break your solution here. So, uh, as far as equipment were set up, depending on your state, you want to make sure that you have the right state selected. Obviously, Maryland only has one projection, but Virginia, Pennsylvania, they different states have north, south, east, and west. So just make sure that you're picking the right one. Depending on the network type that you're connecting to, you want to make sure that your data uh, typically, it'll, it should say NAT83 no trans, meaning uh, the data collector will inherit the coordinates of the actual uh, network uh, in uh, NAD83 datum without applying its own rendition of it or its own transformation. So uh, this is typical for most coarse networks. So like a Trimble, even Topcons works like that. Uh, Geoid is on. US feet is correct. Uh, grid is our coordinate type that we want to watch. And there's no next anymore, so just hit the green check. Right now we'll wait for a little spinny thing to come up that tells us, okay, we are getting a job that's created in the folder that you saw uh, shown up over there. If you don't get a connection screen, you want to make sure that you hit connect next. And this is where we have declared that our HyperSR is actually the one that we're connecting to. If we've connected to it before, you can uh, highlight the connect to last Bluetooth device. I will pretend that I didn't, so you'll see what it does. If it's the first time you're connecting, it'll prompt you for a connection. Make sure that your receiver is actually on. And Bluetooth is now searching for anything that's, you know, in the vicinity that's uh, Bluetooth enabled. We should get a serial number. I got a serial number off of the receiver, hit select, there's no pin typically on these things and because I want to give it the best chance to actually uh, get connected, I want to go outside before I do this so that uh, we have a position on the GPS and we'll hit connect. Connection's been established. And now if we go home and we go into survey and we go into topo, we have a fully fixed position with a low horizontal vertical residuals with a northing easting elevation that tells us that it's actually working. If you're trying to see what the results are or how far you are actually from the nearest base, easiest is 
touch the top left over here, go into status, and you'll see a base distance that says right now 3.59 miles. So I'm connected to a base that's that far away. If you're having a hard time seeing the actual screen, you can always hit home and go into configure, and we can see if in the dark or silver screen if it uh, makes uh, makes it a little easier to actually see but same deal again topo fixed northern easting elevation feet uh, when you're disconnecting you don't want to just turn the receiver off you want to disconnect properly so I will go into connect you disconnect from the network part first that disconnects you from the server but you're still connected to the actual GPS as you can tell and in order to disconnect from the GPS meaning sever the Bluetooth link what you want to do is go into general and just hit disconnect and that uh, as if you just disconnected the actual cable it's now kind of safe to mm, turn off the data collector without you know causing any kind of issues as far as mm, freezing of the software or freezing of the operating system so go ahead and Hit OK and you're done.